In this video, we're going to discuss dip switches on the FTC6. The unit's going to come with some dip switches preset for you already, and that's going to be based around what it's actually physically connected to. So if you're going to get a pre-plumbed cylinder, it's going to make some assumptions on there. So it's based on single heating zone with domestic hot water. What I'm going to go through next is what the dip switches we can change and why we might want to change them. Changing SW1 number two. So it's changing what the maximum discharge temperature of the actual air source pump is going to be. That's normally set to 60 degrees with the R32 type units. Dip switch SW1 number three. This is telling the system whether we're working with hot water or not. So basically saying, have we got a hot water demand? SW1 number four is to do with the immersion. So do we actually have an immersion on this actual system? It's giving an actuation to give power to that immersion, pulling the contact as required. SW1 number seven is to do with the system's a monoblock or a split type system. 99% of the systems you'll come across in the UK are monoblock, in that the whole refrigeration circuit is built into the outdoor unit and you've got water in, water out, out the actual outdoor unit. Split type units, you've got refrigerant power going from the actual outdoor unit getting piped into the actual building and then we're transferring the energy from the refrigerant to water on a plated exchanger internal to the building. So that's very rare in the UK. SW2 number eight is to do with this electronic flow sensor. This is where we're going to enable it or disable it. On the R32 units, we do need this enabled. But there might be times when you put glycons and things like that, you may give you false readings, you may want to switch off for a short period of time just during that commissioning process. SW3 number seven is to do with whether the system's got an external plate or not. Because if we've got an external plate, I've obviously got pump four, so I'm forcing the water in and out of the actual cylinder. However, if we're connecting onto a third party cylinder and we've got an internal coil, I haven't got a pump four, so therefore we need to change that dip switch to suit. So it's going to be activated if we have got a plate heat exchanger, therefore activating power to pump four, and we switch it off we're working on a third party cylinder where we're relying on a coil. SW5 number two is to do with the auto adaption, so just enabling that function. So SW1 number eight, this is going to give power to the wireless controller, so they're actually powering up the wireless receiver. So we're basically enabling that part of the board and also changing some of the functionality in the background, so it starts looking for this wireless control. SW2 number one, this is where we're going to decide we're actually going to use a third party stat to actually control that zone one rather than using Mitsubishi control. So for the same example, we want to go for a nice little simple dial type. Then we start on the wall, because that's what the customer would like. This is where you actually enable that option to turn it into that on-off situation from a rim stack. SW2, number six and seven. This is going to enable to have two zones at two different temperatures. So I can have underfloor heating downstairs and radiators upstairs, for example, with two different flow temperatures. So controlling that mixing valve as well. And obviously the extra thinness is looking for as well when we enable those dip switches. SW3, number one into the on position, is going to enable for a second zone to be running off a of room stat. So you enable for the second zone and basically saying, I now want to use a room stat, third party one, rather than a Mitsubishi control. So it's just enabling those options on the actual board. SW3, number six, by itself, is going to allow me to have two zones. So it's enabling the option for two zones but they're both going to be running at the same temperature. So for example, we might have radiators upstairs and downstairs, and they're both going to be working at the same flow temperature. So no need for a mixing valve. SW4, the only time we're going to be playing about an SW4 is if we've got cascading systems. So we've got multiple Ecodan units working together. So we're telling it's that situation how we've got master and a sub flow temperature control. So it's a little bit more specialized. So just be aware, if you see SW4 with setting put across net, the only time that should be in place is if we're playing about with multiple ECDAN units working together onto a common system. So remember that these tip switches won't be enabled until the unit's powered off and powered back on again. So you changing it whilst the unit's live won't make the change. The only time it's going to make the change is when the unit's powered off. And when I say powered, leave it good for two or three minutes, let that power discharge out of those capacitors in there. Once the lights have gone off, power it back up, that's when it's going to take a those dip switch changes. If you ever want a reminder of the dip switches, the information's in the service books, but it's also
on the cover of the actual unit as well as a little reminder.